Sam, what are you looking for? That, that brochure. I mean, Snow Mountain Ski Resort. I'm going to check the rates on his rooms again. You know, we've really got to talk about that. Ah, uh, no. We are doing this. I don't want you to think about anything except for us up in the mountains. In a cozy room, stretched out in front of a fireplace, mm. snow falling outside. You know, it was incredibly sweet of you to put money away for that. And it's something I've been dreaming about for years. If there is a but coming, I don't want to hear about it. Sam, we just have to be practical. I mean, our expenses are almost twice what they were last year, and we don't have the money to go oh, away. Oh, now you hear this, Mrs. Billy. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <I'm listening. laughs> your husband is going to take you on the ski trip of your life. You and I both need some time away in a, in a place where no one or nothing can find us because we're not going to tell anybody where we are. Mm. Dad jokingly told me to make lots of money for the shop today so that he and Mom can go away sooner. <laughs> oh. Your parents are planning a trip? Where? Um... The ski lodge. Dad wants to take Mom on a secret romantic getaway. <sighs> Sorry, Grace. But the only one who deserves a romantic getaway with Sam is me. You have to come over to the shop right away. You and Dad both. It's very important. No, I don't want you to answer my proposal. You don't want to marry me? I, I didn't want to make- I don't blame you. God, this is all my fault. I completely Gwen. destroyed your love for me by obsessing about Teresa. God, I should have just believed she had a boyfriend. I should have believed you when you told me. It would have saved us a lot of grief, especially Teresa. Mind, Teresa, you cannot go up to Ethan's room. Mama, let me go. Listen to me, Teresa. Gwen is there. She and Ethan spent the night together. Why do you keep saying that? Because you must face the truth. He doesn't love Gwen. He can't. He loves me. I know he does. He can't marry her. Teresa. No, Mama. I am the only woman for him. He's going to marry me. You know that's impossible. Our family can never be connected to the Cranes. So? What? Nothing. No, I just, uh... I'm thinking I shouldn't have put you on the spot. Why are you thinking that? Well, I didn't mean to pressure you into going out with me. But you didn't, I, I mean... Sheridan, you know, you don't owe me anything for saving your life. Just forget it. Forget it, no. I mean, I really want to go out with you tonight, Luis. And it has nothing to do with you saving my life. I understand why you want to nip Sheridan and Luis's romance in the bud, Father. What I don't get is how you intend to do it. You're to bring Sheridan here, and I'll get her to see reason. <laughs> I certainly hope so, Father. My sister is so delusional, I think she could actually believe she's smitten with Luis. What she doesn't realize is he's only using her to get to the truth about his father's disappearance. By the time Sheridan wakes up, it'll be too late. She'll have brought the entire Crane family down with her. Uh, oh, Timmy. Timmy, what have you done to me? Princess! Oh, this is a calamity. Timmy doesn't know what went wrong. Timmy read the incantation in the book. No, Fred, you used the wrong one! Don't worry, Tabby. Timmy will fix everything. <laughs> the only question is... How? Oh. Oh. <sighs> Timmy doesn't have food. I'm still not exactly sure what we're doing here, Miguel. Charity wants to find out what happened to the fish that was stolen off your window, so... It was that weird kid in the wizard's outfit. I'm sure of it. That bump on the head must have hit you pretty hard, Reese. No, I'm telling you, Kay, this kid was I know, wearing a... I know, in a wizard's costume. You've told us. It does sound kind of weird, Reese, but I figure we should check it out. 
I just keep thinking we should ask Tabitha about the fish. Yeah, maybe she saw someone suspicious outside your house. <gasps> Who could that be? Oh, if anyone sees me like this, I'm sunk. What happened? Ethan and Gwen spent the night together. I'm sorry. He loves me. He does. Fate means for us to be together. She mustn't stay here like this. I'll take her home, OK? Thank you. Come on, sweetie. Jessica, are you here? Yeah. What's going on? What's the matter? Nothing. In fact, everything's great. I just rang up an order you won't believe. It's like gigantic. Oh my gosh, you're not kidding. Who is responsible for placing this order? I am. Uh, Ivy, you have such lovely things here, Grace. You have a real eye for crafts. Well, thank you, Ivy. And Jessica is such a helpful salesperson. Oh, well, it's nice of you to say so. I didn't do a thing, Dad. Mrs. Crane just kept on buying and buying. It was really strange, like one of those people on talk shows who would like, a shopaholic or something. I really have to talk to Tabitha about the fish. For some strange reason, I really feel that on some level we're connected. You and the fish. No. Who is it? Miguel, Kate, Charity, and that reef kid, the one who fell to me with the fishbowl. Oh, don't answer. Maybe they'll go away. Oh, I need time to figure out how to get the rest of my body back. Oh. You don't blame me for being angry, Tabitha. Oh, you don't blame me. Oh. I thought kids today were supposed to be slackers. Why aren't they slacking off someplace? Why are they hounding me? I really need to talk to Tabitha. My feelings keep getting stronger, Miguel, and it's like this premonition that something might be really wrong. Uh, don't worry, Tabby. Timmy will look in the big book. Try to find the right incantation. Tabitha must be out somewhere. We'll come back later. Come on. Whoa. What the, 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 there's, there's a giant fish tail in there. So, I'll pick you up. Your cottage. Right. Then we'll go to dinner. That sounds great. Lobster shack. It's a date. I, I mean, that would be. It is a date, isn't it? I guess. You don't look pleased with that, Louise. It's not me. It's. It's you. I'm worried about you, Sheridan. Why? You know, Julian's not going to be very pleased when he finds out that I asked you out. I couldn't care less. I live my own life. No one tells me what to do. Not my brother or my father. They learned a long time ago to not interfere with what I do or who I see. Excuse me. Yeah. Hello? It's me, Sheridan. I need to speak to you right away. It's a family matter. Urgent. <laughs> I 
All right, Ivy, what's the deal? Deal? Who, what are you up to? Oh, really, Sam? I'm just buying some gifts for corporate associates. What possible ulterior motive could I have? Oh, I don't know. But when it comes to Grace and me, I suspect everything you do. Really, Sam? Look, I know you're not here for Grace's arts and crafts, but she believes that you are. My wife is a very trusting woman. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you were going to say gullible. Listen, you're not going to do anything to harm my wife, all right? Sam, do you think I want to hurt Grace? I just want you to remember what we once had. I know you haven't forgotten. Look, how many times one do I hour. have to tell you? All I want is one hour of your time. I want you to spend one hour alone with me. Listen, stay out of our lives, right? Mrs. Crane? Yes, Jessica. Do you want these gifts right away? Because it's going to take a while to wrap them all. No. I'm in no hurry. Would the morning be okay? It's perfect, Jessica. Thank you for being so helpful. Grace, it's such a pleasure to shop here. You'll let me know when you're getting new things in? Um, well, Valentine's Day, actually. I'm expecting new things any day now. Perfect. I'll stop by and pick up something for the man I love. <laughs> Bye, Sam. This sale was so incredible. I mean, we made so much money, we're going to get to go on that ski trip. <laughs> yes, we can. <sighs> Tracy, you shouldn't just let me take you home. What am I going to do there, Whitney? Stare at the ceiling? There's no way I can sleep. Well, you just need to get some hot tea and relax, okay? Come on, let's let's find a place to sit down. I was so sure that that Ethan was jealous. I had convinced myself that when he heard me call Chuck my boyfriend, and when I actually kissed Chuck, that Ethan wouldn't be able to hide his feelings from me. That he would realize that he's in love with me and not Gwen. It is not going to happen. It's just a fantasy. And you've got to give it up. Do not go driving yourself crazy trying to make Ethan fall in love with you because it is not going to happen. I'm so sure. You know, what, what about Chuck? Why don't you go out with him? He seems really interested in you. He is. He called. He asked me out. See? That's great. I turned him down. I told him my heart belongs to someone else. You know, you should call him back. He's a really nice guy. You could do a lot worse than Chuck. Ethan is the only man for me, Whitney, and I know that I am the only woman for him. That's it? What's it? I know why Ethan spent the night with Gwen last night. You do? He's going to dump her. I, uh, I, I guess this is goodbye, Ethan. Gwen, no. I want you to know that I'm not going to be able to see you. It's just going to be too painful Gwen. for me. But you have to know that I'm never going to stop loving you. And I do understand why you don't want to marry me. <laughs> you know, for a sensitive and savvy woman, you sure are dense sometimes. Of course I love you. Of course I want to marry you. You do? Yes. Well, then why did you say you didn't want to hear my answer? Because I want to do it right. You know, I want it to be the most romantic moment in our lives. When I proposed to you, I picked a special date. You know, a day we can celebrate for the rest of our lives. I don't know what to say. Yes, I do know what to say. When is the special day? What? Well, I, I just remembered something I need to take care of. What? It's going to be a surprise, and you won't be disappointed, I promise. Ethan, does this thing that you have to take care of have to do with me? With us? Look, I'll see you later. Ethan, at For least dinner. give me a hint. I love you. That's the only clue I'll give you. I love you, too.
Valentine's Day. Yes, that'll be when he'll propose. Oh, you can't get any more romantic than that. It's the same kind of fish that was in the bowl, except like a hundred times the size. I'll give you help. Flex those mighty biceps and pull me out of the way, out of sight. It's got a tail the size of a great white. Maybe the fish got caught in some kind of nuclear reaction or something. You've been playing way too many video games. No, maybe it's my premonitions. They're really strange. Charity, a, a shark in Tabitha's living room. If you guys don't believe me, look for yourselves. Pull, Timmy! Pull! Ow! Oh. Busy? Yes, Sam, I'm just about done. Listen, I just got a call from O'Brien. He had a family emergency. I don't suppose you'd want to take his late shift and cover at the station house, do you? You don't suppose right. I got plans for tonight. <laughs> plans? Is it a date? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. It's good to see you getting around, seeing people. Well, who's the lucky girl tonight? Well, I'm not so sure she's lucky. When the family finds out that I'm going out with her, she's going to catch a lot of flack. Please don't tell me you're going out with Sheridan Crane. Hey, I'm as surprised as you are. <laughs> How did it happen? Uh, you know, usual way. Asked her out. She said yes. Well, when did things change? I mean, you were in Sharon and are like oil and water. I mean, worse. Well, I've done a complete 180 with Sheridan. Now, she's not the spoiled little rich girl that I thought she was. She's really come through for me, Sam. Oh, yeah? How? As friend to friend, not as cop to cop. Police, of course. Friend to friend. Sheridan helped me search the Crane Mansion. What? Look, I'm trying to find a connection between the Cranes and the Martin Imposter. Now, unfortunately, Julian came home before I had time to crack his little safe. C crack the safe? Hey, Luis, are you crazy? You didn't even have a search warrant. I didn't need one. I wasn't breaking the law. Sheridan invited me in the mansion. <sighs> Julian caught you poking around the mansion? Oh, man, this, this, this worries me, Luis. He's not going to come after the Harmony PD. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about you. I mean, it's one thing that you're suspicious of how and why your father disappeared, but this, going against the cranes on their own turf, this is dangerous. You've got to be thinking that you're throwing down the gauntlet, that you're becoming a major threat. Hello, Julian. Ooh. There's a smile that would brighten any room. How fortunate you've chosen mine. <laughs> it won't work, Julian. Not even your sarcasm can bring me down today. And the reasons for these high spirits would be... Oh, wait. Most discouraging thought just occurred to me. You brought that cop back for another tour of the mansion. <laughs> no, anything else you'd like to know? I'd like to know everything, darling sister. His father is fond of saying knowledge is power. Who wants to argue with Alistair Crane? Not I. I don't have a lot of time, Julian, so why don't you just tell me what you wanted to see me about? Knowledge? Power? Family? You've put us in a very delicate position, Sheridan. It's hard to understand why. You do understand what I'm talking about, don't you? 30 seconds, Julian. That's what I'm going to give you to get to the point. What's the all-fired rush? I have to shower and change. I'm going out this evening. With whom? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm going out to dinner with Luis. That's exactly what I wanted to speak to you about, Sheridan. OK, Teresa, would you mind making sense for me, please? <laughs> Why would Ethan be in bed with Gwen if he's going to dump her? It's simple, Whitney. Think about it. Ethan is so sensitive and so considerate that he wanted to let Gwen down easy. Oh, right. So he gave Gwen one last night. And in the morning, he told her as gently as he could that he doesn't love her anymore, that it's over, that he loves me. 
Mm. Okay, can we just backtrack for one second? Do you have any recollection of Gwen saying that when this issue with your boyfriend was over, that she was gonna accept Ethan's proposal? It doesn't matter what Gwen said or what she wants. All that matters is that Ethan has finally awakened to his feelings for me. Teresa, how long have we known each other? Practically all our lives. That's right. And when you were a little girl and you wanted something, like the starring role in the fourth grade play <laughs> or the church Easter pageant, you name it, you would close your eyes and think, if I wish hard enough, it'll happen. You would say those exact words. Do you remember that? I remember. But we're all grown up now, Teresa, and words just aren't enough anymore. Wishing for Ethan is not gonna make it happen. Hello? Hey, uh, Teresa, it's Ethan. Ethan, hi. Yeah, are you free to meet me? Free? Yes. Oh, where are you? I, I need to see you right now. I'm at the book cafe. All right, I'll be there in a minute. I'll be waiting. What did I tell you? He, he's coming here. I knew it, Whitney. The only reason Ethan spent the night with Gwen is to say goodbye. It is all over between them. And now, he's coming straight to me. I don't see anything. But it was there, a giant fishtail. I saw it with my own two eyes. Gone. Big surprise. No, Kate, this is for real. First I saw Tabitha's head appear in the fishbowl, and then the weird wizard kid, and now the fishtail. I wish that I had a tape so I could play this back for you, Reese. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> you think I'm losing my mind? I don't know, maybe I am. Hey, hey, you just need some rest, all right? You must have hit your head really hard when you slipped in the Bennett's kitchen. You're right. It must be the bump on my head. I just need to rest. Come on. Timmy thinks they're gone. Oh, finally. Oh. Wait, you guys! I just heard something! You guys, I heard a noise coming from inside tab of this house. Maybe she is home. Well, why didn't she answer the doorbell? Um, I don't know. What if she fell and she can't get up? We've really got to help her. Rat! Oh, let this be a lesson to you, Timmy. No good deed goes unpunished. Timmy, sorry. Never mind the apologies. Just find that incantation. Timmy did. Well, don't just sit there and cant. Rugs and zombs! No, 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 not that one! Hi. Oh. That's torn it. We're flopping around on Timmy's head. We've got to go in, Miguel. Locked. Well, maybe we can find an open window. Forget the bunny ears. Just hide all the wizard stuff and find the proper incantation to get me back to my normal self before those bloody kids break in here. Luis and I are none of your business. Au contraire, my dear. You made it my business when you brought Lopez Fitzgerald into this house. Don't you dare give me that line about looking for brandy and being overcome with lust. This mansion is enormous. You could have satisfied your lust in any number of rooms, but you chose to do it in the library, mere inches from my safe. Yes, let's talk about that safe of yours, Julian. What could be inside that would make you secretly install a silent laser alarm? What could you be afraid of that someone might find out about Martin Fitzgerald? <gasps> afraid? <laughs> the last thing I am, dear sister, is afraid of anything. I'll show you. 
exactly what's in this safe. Et voilà. Have a look for yourself. Find anything? Outside of some of Crane Industries' foreign contracts, nothing. But you could have removed the evidence. <sighs> anything incriminating. For pity's sake, Sharon. You might be foolish for doing this. I believe you, Julian. Well, it's the truth. Why wouldn't you believe me? I'm sure Luis will be pleased to know that the Cranes aren't hiding anything that has to do with his father. Whether Luis is pleased or not is of no importance to me. What is important is your association with him. I'm only thinking of your best interests now, Sheridan. Or you stay away from Luis Lopez Fitzgerald. So they see me as a threat. Who cares? I'm not out to win a popularity contest with the Cranes. I know they're responsible for my father's disappearance. And one way or another, I'm going to find out how. And when I do, I'm going to nail them. Well, that could take a while, Luis. What happens if you get involved with uh, Sheridan before you find out? All I did was ask her out, okay? That's all I said was, what if? Look, one thing I know. Sheridan's different than her brother. She believes in the truth, and she'll go after her wherever it leads. Well, for your sake, I hope she is different. What does that mean? Well, I've... I've known other men who've fallen for women in the crane circle, and, uh... Hey, everything was cool for a little while. I mean, the women were, uh... Honest, genuine, nice. And then the cranes put the pressure on. The women were pressured into doing what the family wanted. I mean, they were forced to toe the line. And the men, the ones who had uh, fallen for them, well, they were told to go to hell. You all right, Chief? Good afternoon, Mrs. Crane. When you're done with that, I'd like my ski equipment packed. Oh, where is it to be sent, Mrs. Crane? Chamonix? Or will you be going to the Italian Alps this year? What? I'm so relieved to hear you'll be going to Europe. I've been afraid that you might try to relive your past with Sam Bennett. Mm. <laughs> I know, Pilar. Because that would hurt your family and your son. Ethan would be terribly upset. Yes, well, if I had any sense at all, I would go to Europe. What are you saying? I'm not going to Europe. Oh, Mrs. Crane, mm -hmm. no. Pilar, what you say before you is a woman who can't eat, who can't sleep, who can't think of anything but the one thing she once had and gave up. But that was so long ago. Well, I made a terrible mistake. You were young. Doesn't matter. I should never have allowed my family and the Cranes to do what they did, to come between me and the one man I loved. And I really did love him. I do love him, Pilar, more than love. And if it's the last thing I do, I will correct that mistake. One day, I will get back the thing I lost and what is still rightfully mine. Mrs. Crane, what does this mean? What are you up to? He's here. Oh, <laughs> Teresa, thank you for seeing me on such short notice. Oh, where's your boyfriend? My boyfriend? Uh, Chuck, I, yeah, I thought he'd be here. Well, we're supposed to meet up later, but something else might come up. Hi. How's it going, Whitney? Well, um, and then I'll make this to the point and really short. I hope you weren't upset about the Chuck misunderstanding. Oh, as far as I am concerned, it never happened. But what about Gwen? Has she accepted your proposal? Actually, there was no proposal.
Tabitha? Tabitha? Are you in here? Oh, oh, oh you startled me. Oh. We rang the bell. Oh, well, my hearing isn't what it was a century or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I'm feeling like today. Positively prehistoric. <laughs> well, how did you little dears get in? We, uh, found an open window. The door was locked. So... Well, we thought we heard something fall, and we were worried that it could... Might be me. <laughs> oh, you sweet children. <laughs> no, nothing to worry about. I'm right as rain, but just... Just a little weary. I was trying to catch 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you didn't ask Gwen to marry you. Oh. I'm sorry. No. No. It was rough at first, but I think she finally understood. Excuse me. Did you hear? Yes, I heard. I was right, Whitney. Ethan and Gwen are finished. It's all over. He loves me. Not Gwen. No, I, I didn't hear that. The minute they broke up, he came straight to me. Yes, I'd like to see the final selection of engagement rings ready for me to look at when I get there. Yeah, today. I need it immediately. It's all moving even faster than I thought it would, Whitney. He wants to give me engagement ring right away. Okay, you're doing that jumping to conclusions thing again. You didn't hear him say that he was through with Gwen? No, no, what I heard... And now he's telling the jeweler that he wants a ring right away. It's obvious, Whitney, he wants to give me an engagement ring. Okay, look, if I were you, you Teresa... You and Mama both have been telling me that all my dreams will only hurt me, but you're wrong because all of my dreams are about to come true. You know, I was telling your father I didn't think we could go away on this trip. But now, thanks to Ivy Crane, you're going to have the time of your lives. Mm. <laughs> I cannot wait to get up into those mountains. Miles away from every town. Crisp snow on the ground, everything pristine. Miles of ski slopes and nothing waiting for us but a nice warm fire at the end of the day. So romantic. Mm. <laughs> There's just one thing, Mom. You're not that hot a skier. <laughs> Thanks. It could be a little dangerous. Oh, nothing's gonna go wrong. I mean, what could with your father there? What am I up to with this ski resort brochure, Pilar? Well, you've always claimed you can read me like a book. What do you see? Don't do this, Mrs. Crane. Whatever you're up to will come to no good. If Sam and Grace are going on a ski trip, leave them alone. For your sake, for the sake of your son, your family, Something wrong? For your own good, Sharon, you stay away from Louise. You can't tell me what to do, Julian. I will go out with whomever I want. I'm not the only one who's warning you off this. Father doesn't want you associating with that cop either. I don't care what father wants. You should. He's going to put the ring on my finger tonight. Ooh. I wonder if I still have time to give myself a manicure. Okay, can we just back up for one tiny second here? Um, what exactly did Ethan just say to you that would make you think he's gonna marry you? Hmm? Nothing, nothing at all. His phone rang, he couldn't, and if it hadn't, the next words out of his mouth would have been, he has loved me all along. That was the jeweler returning my call. Yes? Look, Teresa, I know I have no right to ask you this. Yes, you do. You have every right. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Well, can you go with me to the jewelry store? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I really trust your taste, and I, and I want to make certain that Gwen will like the ring. Nothing's wrong, Gwen. Nothing at all. Everything's fine. Good. How's everything with you and Ethan? Oh, we are totally back on track. Things couldn't be better. <laughs> Come Valentine's Day, I might have some news about our future. Mine and Ethan's. <laughs> oh. I have a feeling Valentine's Day is going to be a special day for the whole family. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. It just, uh, you know, it just gets me steamed to, to, to think about the, the cranes and, and the power that they have and how they manipulate everything and, and play with people's lives. Not mine. Just be careful, Luis. I mean, if the cranes find out that you're dating Sheridan, you could be in some real trouble. Look, Sheridan's different. She can handle her family. And tonight we'll prove that. Why didn't you tell me father was listening in on the speakerphone? Because he asked me not to. That's right. My hope was that you'd come to your senses and realize the family comes first. And decide on your own to give up your association with Luis Lopez Fitzgerald once Julian had presented the problem. But clearly it was too much to hope for. And so now I have no recourse but to lay down the law. For your own good, Sheridan, you are to break off all communication with Luis. Water. I, I spilled a glass clumsy of me. <laughs> Well, it's really comforting to know I have such caring neighbors. But I'm, I'm fine, really, really fine. I guess we kind of overreacted. But I still think that there's something. Someone stole a fish that I had on the windowsill. Stole a fish? Yeah, it, it was in a bowl. And I was hoping that maybe you'd seen what happened. We think that maybe a boy dressed in a wizard costume took it. Certainly didn't see anything like that. <laughs> but then I, I was probably asleep at the time, so. I... Well, I think we've intruded on Tabitha enough. Oh, yeah, Kay's right. We should go. Um, but we'll stop by tomorrow if that's okay. Oh, please don't put yourself out, dear. Hey, come on, let's go, Reese. <laughs> 